Hi, my name is Brian Minatoya, and today we're going to go over your Housing Choice Voucher Briefing. This is the mandatory briefing by the City and County of Honolulu Section 8 Office to share with you a lot of important and mandatory information about your Section 8 Housing Choice Voucher. This briefing is required and also informational to learn more about your Section 8 program and our office so that you can exercise your housing choice voucher in your rentals that you want to use it for. As a housekeeping, if you or anyone in your family is a person with disabilities and you re require a specific accommodation in order to fully utilize our programs and services, please talk to one of our staff members so we can help you out with that process. This briefing is going to go over a lot of it about your housing choice voucher and this is a very valuable opportunity where you'll be paying 30 to 40 percent of your income towards rent and this is an assistance that many um, are waiting for on the wait list so please take this opportunity to learn a lot about your voucher and avoid uh, mishaps or reasons why you would lose that section 8 voucher today's agenda is to explain the voucher process explain the family self-sufficiency program review the landlord information packet review the family packet review the rental packet explain the voucher size assignment, issue and sign the vouchers, and go over your rent share. Included in your packet that you will receive will have a brochure about the Family Self-Sufficiency Program, otherwise known as FSS. This is a voluntary program, so once you are leased up and everything is settled, I invite you to explore this program as it provides employment support, escrow savings incentive, and home ownership referral resources. The Section 8 program and the landlord and tenant work in a successful relationship with each other, kind of like this triangle figure you see here, where each person, entity, has responsibilities to each other and also a contract that each entity will sign and enter into. For example, the landlord and tenant will sign a rental lease agreement to formalize their expectation of each other. Today, you'll be signing a Section 8 voucher that will explain and tell you our responsibilities to you and your responsibilities to us with the Section 8 Housing Assistance Payments Program. Included in your packet is the Landlord Information Packet. This packet will be just for landlords in case they want to learn more about our program or get updates about our program. Included in here is the payment standards, lead-based paint, housing quality standards inspection information, otherwise known as HQS, the rent reasonable test, and sample housing agency payment contract. It's just a sample and we call it the HAP. As a reminder, for all rentals that we approve in our program, we submit it for a rent reasonable test where we compare your unit rent amount with similar units across the island and to see if your rent's charge is above that amount. If it is, we may deny it or ask you to lower it down to a different rent amount. This is the current payment standards range please check our website for the most updated payment standards range. Here you will see a range from payment standards from one number to a different number. That's because we have a thing called a small area fair market rent, where the subsidy amount will change based on the zip code you choose to live in. We issue a voucher size based on the amount of people that you have in your household. So say that you have three people in your voucher, you are expected to receive a two bedroom voucher because there's two people per bedroom and that three people will make up one pair and an additional to make a two bedroom voucher. Again, if you have any more questions about the payment standards, do check our website or reach your examiner that's assigned to you. This is the map of Oahu currently, and this is the zip codes that we have highlighted in different colors. 
Do know that when using your voucher, you should explore renting to other areas that you may have not considered renting before, such as low poverty areas or areas that's near close to your school, close to your job, or any other resources that you may need. So explore searching around through your island because there's plenty of opportunities to move from one zip code to another while exercising our voucher. When looking at the payment standards, it's more about your budget, but not necessarily the voucher size issued or the bedroom size of your unit. So say if you receive a studio size voucher, many of our participants elect to live in a one bedroom because that one bedroom is pretty affordable and it fits within their studio size budget. So later on in a different presentation, you'll learn a little bit more about if your voucher and your rental is going to work with each other. So it's very important to you to, to review that payment standard schedule and also to look at your budget to see if that unit you're looking at can work for this program. Our program, the City and County, also provides a monetary allowance for utilities not included as part of rent. This is based on the voucher size and type of unit. So there's many types of units. We have single family homes, duplexes, high rises, and low rises. So there's a lot, some factors of what kind of monetary allowance we can give to you. This utility standard schedule will be also available on our website and also attached to your rental packet that you can look at later on. So this monetary allowance will be direct, deducted directly from your standard rent share. So your 30 to 40% of income will be your rent, but we do a deduction called utility allowance to lower what you normally would have paid to your landlord so that you can budget for your electricity, gas, or water a little bit easier. So utilities, again, can be things that the landlord chooses for you to, to be responsible for, such as electricity, gas, or water, and if so, it is your responsibility to take care of these bills and to keep it on and current. So our recommendation is to make sure that your electricity does not get turned off or your gas or your water. Included in your packet, you will also have a leasing contact sheets and housing assistance information in your briefing packets. It is your responsibility to look for housing and to search for housing. So I recommend these websites such as Craigslist, Hotpads, or checking our front desk areas where we post um, recent landlord information and rental leads for you to take a look at. You can also contact me, the landlord specialist, at 808-768-7398 for any other ideas to help you with your housing search. Another packet that you'll find is the family information packet. This is just for your own literature that you can keep with your rental lease or any other important documents or as a tool to refer to this presentation. In here, you have your voucher and tenant responsibilities, the strategies to search and secure a lease, the housing quality standards, otherwise known as HQS requirements, and information about fair housing awareness. So a lot of inf useful information to help you out with your program. Let's go over some key family obligations that is important so that you know not to um, break them or be careful about it. The first one is you must allow the public housing authority, that's us, to inspect the unit at reasonable times after reasonable notice. Also, you must notify the housing authority and owner in writing before you move out of the unit or terminating the lease. You also must put in writing to our housing authority to add any member to your household as an occupant to the unit. You can't just add people without talking to us. So it's very important to put that in writing so that your worker can make that approval for you. So each person in your household has to be approved. Please do not do any illegal activity such as drug related, violent criminal activity as that might jeopardize your housing assistance. Do not commit any fraud or other illegal activity. Do not commit any serious or repeated lease violations. Should your landlord evict you, you will also lose your Section 8 housing assistance. 
you also are not able to rent from units owned by your parent, child, grandparent, grandchild, sister, or brother of any member of the family unless a request for reasonable accommodation is approved. Here are some tenant responsibilities that are important, so let's talk about each point here. Pay rent share in full and on time. So the landlord will be receiving two forms of their rental payments, one from the Section 8 office and one from you. Both make up their full rent amount. So please be sure you pay that full and on time. Keep any utility charge bills current. Notify examiner all changes in income and family composition within 10 days in writing. Respond promptly to written communications. Comply with terms of the lease. Comply with family obligations under the voucher program. Do not commit to any side agreements with landlord in excess of family share of rent. And no subletting is allowed in the Section 8 program. Let's go over your tenancy. So the initial lease term has to be for one year and it's fixed and cannot terminate or move until the term is completed. The landlord must give tenant written notice no less than 45 days in writing before the anticipated anticip termination date. The tenant must provide to landlord written notice no less than 28 days before the anticipated termination date. Please acknowledge that you are going to be under the Section 8 Housing Choice Voucher Program. And if you are found to be committing fraud, or you are knowingly committing fraud, or another household member is committing fraud, that may jeopardize your assistance. So please be careful. We use a system called Enterprise Income Verification. This helps us verify reported income sources that's listed on your application. This helps us confirm outstanding debt or balances owed to any housing authorities and confirm other personal information. So it is important that you tell us the truthful and complete information of your household income. Since you'll be receiving a voucher shortly, your voucher may be able to be ported to another jurisdiction. What portability means is that you can take your voucher and use it in a different jurisdiction, such as from Honolulu to Las Vegas, or even intra-island from Honolulu to the Big Island or Kauai. The first step you need to do is contact your examiner if you wish to port. That examiner will go through some step processes and go over some forms that is required from our program. The location that you wish to move to must have a public housing authority that has Section 8 assistance. And wherever you are going to go to and then move, you'll be locked into a one-year lease term. So before porting, these are some things you should know. The subsidy standards may change from one jurisdiction to another. The payment standards will also change from one jurisdiction to another. Um, you may be rescreened at the place you, that you arrive at. And a lot of time management, time sensitive issues might come up. So do a lot of homework before going to take a flight or make that move. Um, and also know that some housing authorities do practice a small area fair market rent. So it's kind of hard to understand that without meeting with your examiner. So talk to your examiner first before making that big decision. Our office does have an informal settlement procedure of disputes. You have this information located in your family information packet where a written complaint to our agency can help start a discussion informally and settle without having a hearing. Any complaint must be filed within 15 calendar days of the date written notification. Let's talk about unit requirements. There should be an initial inspection before you lease up in our program and before we can call that unit approvable for our program. That's called the initial inspection. After that, there will be annual or a biannual inspection, including a random quality control inspection. What our inspectors will do is go through the entire property to see if it's safe and sanitary and 
a decent dwelling for your household. They will check things like your bathroom, your shower, your kitchen sink, your microwave oven, your food preparation space, your fridge, and there's a smoke detector for each floor. So these are certified HUD inspectors that are trained and may make some decisions based on your case by case basis. So it's important when if you're expecting an inspection to be there or have someone be there so that they can review these things with you. Along with these inspections, there's also a requirement for an inspector to take a look to see if your unit you chose is conforming legally by zoning. So some units are not zoned legally with the city and county of Honolulu. So if it's not conforming unit, we may not be able to approve that unit. There will be information about fair housing in your family information packet. This will include tenant rights in housing, which includes the Violence Against Women Act. This applies to all tenants, female and male. So this is important to review that in an event that it applies to your household. It is illegal to discriminate against any persons because of race, color, religion, sex, sexual orientation, gender identity, handicap, familial status, or national origin. To complete any VAWA or discrimination complaint, there'll be information in your family packet of how you can complete that complaint or to report your domestic violence. For reasonable accommodation, if you have a disability and as a result of your disability, you need a change in the rules or policies to give you an equal opportunity to take part in the Section 8 program, or a change in the way we communicate with you or give you information, you may be asked for this kind of change. This is called a reasonable accommodation. If you can show that you have a disability and your, if your request is reasonable, we will try to grant your request. We will give you an answer within a reasonable time from the date we receive your request, unless there's a problem getting the information or we need to give you a little bit more time. We will let you know if we need more information from you. And um, if you turn down requests, we will explain the reasons and you can give us more information if that helps with your request. A good tenant pays rent in full and on time, follows house rules and other rental agreement conditions, respects other tenants' privacies and rights, and maintains and leaves the unit in good condition. So the reason why I went over this point is because your behavior as a tenant, good or bad, reflects on the Housing Choice Voucher Program community as a whole and can affect future voucher holders' ability to lease. So everyone is a face of the Section 8 program. The voucher provides legal authority for the voucher holder to search for a suitable rental unit with the backing of the public housing agency. Your initial lease term, I mean, I'm sorry, the initial term of your voucher is 60 days. So it is important to start your housing search very quickly so that your 60 days can be meaningful. However, if you need to request for additional time, you must submit it in writing to our office before your voucher expires. Extensions will be granted on a case by case basis. So when you do receive your voucher, you'd be expected to sign a copy and keep one copy for yourself so that you know that you have the backing of the housing authority and you know what your voucher length is. So double check your name and your, your, your time frame from how, how long you can look for housing as that's very important to know. Let's explain the Section 8 unit search step process. After this video, you would receive your Section 8 voucher. The first step is to search for a unit within your voucher time limit. Then the next step is to have the landlord and tenant to complete the rental packet. The third step is to complete that rental packet, but also to submit it to the office. You may need to reach out to your examiner to learn the steps of how you want to submit it. Um, I recommend setting an appointment with your worker so that they can have that individual time with you to go over that packet with you, either by phone or in person. The next step is that your unit will be referred for inspection, should everything be okay. And then if it does pass inspection, step five is to sign on a move-in date 
and um, when do you want to start that lease? So things can go by pretty quickly once you do find a place. But the important thing is to have your worker receive that rental packet, have them review it, and refer it for inspection. Should the inspection not pass, the landlord will be given some additional time to fix the deficiencies so that it can pass the inspection. The rental packet you receive is for you and the landlord to both complete. So on areas on that packet, we have um, where tenant should sign as a head of household and the landlord should sign as an owner or owner representative. So sometimes you might encounter agents or the owners themselves filling out these forms. So the contents of this rental packet include the request for tenancy approval, the disclosure of lead-based paint, the sample of a rental agreement, tenancy addendum, landlord screening information form, a rental search form because you might be looking for a lot of places is a great way to put your housing search record there, owner certification form, owner authorization form, authorization for direct deposit, check payee information with attached W-9 form. So do double check this form after you, you complete your visit with your owner or agent to see if everything is completed. I recommend do not sign the rental agreement until the unit does pass inspection. That is because when you sign an agreement, sign a legal document, that binds you legally and sometimes things can fall through during the rental inspection process. And with your rental packet, we need a copy of the proposed rental lease, the lease that the landlord proposes to use with you once everything is completed. So again, the rental packet should be completed along with the rental lease agreement. Here are some frequently asked questions about our Section 8 Housing Choice Voucher Program. The question is, what if I have a medical card for marijuana? Although the state of Hawaii law allows the use of medical marijuana, federal and state non-discrimination laws do not require the housing agencies and owners of federally assisted housing to accommodate requests by a resident with the use of medical marijuana. Marijuana is considered a controlled substance. If you or any member of your household are found to manufacture, possess, or distribute any controlled substance from your unit, the household will be automatically terminated. Next question, can I use my voucher where I currently live? Yes, it is recommended to explore your current landlord as a viable option as searching for housing and moving in general may be difficult. Um, your lease term with your current landlord will be renewed for one year as a fixed term after that one year term is finished, you're eligible to move to another place after talking to your examiner because things that may have changed from one year from now. Next question is, why can't I sublet my, with my voucher? It's cheaper. So subletting is like if you have a four bedroom house and you have an extra room or someone can sleep on a sofa or bed and you're, they're paying you, that's not allowed, okay? The housing assistance is made for you and your household only. You are not permitted to sublet your unit. It will jeopardize your housing assistance. So if you wish to add someone to your household, please contact your examiner for more information. Another question is, I have a service animal. Would that be a problem? Having a service animal is not an eligibility factor for Section 8 housing programs. However, landlords may seek information or clarification from you to, to talk about your service animal. The next question is, I need an extension to my voucher. So please submit in writing a request for an extension of your voucher with a housing search log or something that explains what you've been doing with your voucher. And then it is recommended to submit this request within two weeks before your voucher expires. So my recommendation is get this something in writing with your housing search log before your housing voucher is expired. Extensions are considered on a case-by-case -case basis. If you have any other questions, please refer to your examiner or contact our Honolulu office at 768-7096 or you can contact me, the presenter, at 
7398. Mahalo.